Welcome to the Monday, July 22nd, 2019 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Liz Pritchett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Seth Mitchell. Benjamin Cheney. For anyone who's not here, here, been here before, we are advisory to the Montpelier Development Review Board. We will listen to each of the applications and move them forward. And do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. Unless anybody has anything else to offer, we'll go to the first application for 149 State Street. Come up and have a seat, Joe. Good evening, everyone. Hello. Good evening. Um, the cut sheet. Hold on, I, you can need to move the microphone oh, towards uh, you. Oh, yeah. And Perfect. there we go. Thank you. Um, I have the cut sheet that I provided for you was inaccurate. I didn't realize that um, Alan Lumber also quoted their 8200 series, which is a vinyl clad, and I saw my mistake about four days ago. So, <laughs> these, this is the um, Marvin Integrity, uh, which was the what we originally were pricing, because that's what we originally desired. <coughs> And uh, my name is Joseph Ferrari. I'm one of the owners. My wife and I uh, own the building and we purchased it somewhere around 84, 85. I was a very young man. <laughs> it's a nice building. <laughs> it's a beautiful building. Yeah. So we are uh, proposing to replace 29 of the original windows um, in what I believe was the original part of the building. And if you look at the photograph of the building, it has three separate roof lines. And the first, fronting the street, um, that has a full foundation of feel stone and brick on the back of it. Then there's a midsection with a lower roof line, and then a third section with even a lower roof line. The third section was the carriage house originally, and when we purchased it, it was in a dilapidated condition in the mid-80s, and we rebuilt it. And we followed the pattern of the colors of the windows at the time. I think the midsection was added on well before, certainly well before our ownership, and probably well before those two rear sections are crawl space areas with a um, five foot foundation and, and crawl space. <clears throat> um, what we're planning to, so the, the windows in the rear were basically there, but we, we never changed the windows in the midsection. We had to replace the windows in the rear section to match the midsection. And what we're proposing is the 29 double hung windows in the front section of the building. Those are original windows to the building. Um, now we're going with white for two reasons. One is we scraped some of the windows to see if we could find another color, and we did not. And then the second reason not seeing that is that because all of the other windows are white trim, it would look odd if the, uh, the front sections were all dark trim. Mm -hmm. But we found no uh, no scent, no resemblance or sense of there being a darker color. I thought there would be um, shutters. I'm not sure if they're original. As you can see them, they are very dark green. So I thought maybe the windows would be trimmed dark, but we could not find any evidence of that. And then there's a rear section where there are more shutters. And the windows that we are proposing to replace are two over two patterns because that seems to be the majority of the windows in the building, in that section of the building. Mm -hmm. And it was followed in the rear section also, I believe, when they were replaced. And um, there are only a couple of windows that are one over one, you know, one sheet over one sheet. Those were most likely 
replaced by someone who owned it in the past. We've never replaced a window in that section. And so the windows that we're proposing are two over two patterns, um, trying to duplicate as close as possible to the originals. Are there any historical photos that you've found? There was, well, not historical, there was a photo that was given to me years ago, but it's really of the, the house at the corner of Bailey and State. You can't really see our building. And that was probably from the 50s, maybe. But this building's vintage would be about 1875. storms uh, on the rear sections yes there are aluminum storms on all of the windows now yes. and, the, and those will come off well those are coming off on the, the 29 that we're replacing yeah yes that aluminum storm will also come off yes and the cavities will all be insulated and and caught you know where the uh, ropes were on the weights for those windows. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Do you have an idea how much your opening is going to shrink? I can't I, I figure it don't, out. Either. I can't figure that out myself. I, I don't think there's going to be much shrinkage to it at all. So at least Usually, I think, I mean, are you replacing the jams or anything, just the windows? The windows. Is a whole unit? That's it's going a whole in? unit, yes. Uh -huh. A whole unit. I mean, jams and everything. Yeah, yes. so they probably usually try to make the windows as close as possible to the opening and the window size as close to what was there. Are you replacing exterior trim? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Not unless we find something, you know, if there's a piece of exterior trim that's damaged, rotted, it'll be replaced so by... So then you would be leaving the jams. The, the jams are replaced. The outside casing... The outside... Yeah. And you take the... I mean, they, these were all custom measured yeah, they uh, are. by Scott Wilson. These were all custom and what he does measured. is he measures the rough opening, mm -hmm. and then they size this window accordingly. Mm -hmm. When you have the sash weights, the old jams were wider, and there's more airspace. So when my experience in replacing these, a number of them, was that when we put the new window in, the actual glass size was same. within three quarters of an inch okay. to total width. So I was told they were going to be you're, pretty you're, exact. You're replacing yeah. them as, as close as you could ever possibly oh, replace okay. them. Obviously the advantage is you have an insulated glass yeah, yeah. and you don't have to count on your tenants to close the storm with this <laughs> you don't have well actually paint they can't anymore. close or open many Most of these stuff, windows yeah. I mean they are guillotines to begin with because mm -hmm. the weights are gone and many of them right. over the years I guess and also um, they're really subject to uh, moisture yeah and they're a bear so your SDL bar is is actually glued to the glass right Yes. And you, it says you don't have a spacer bar. Correct. I found that you have to get within about 8 to 10 feet of a window at eye level to even begin to see whether there's a spacer bar or not. The way they apply on both sides of the insulated glass is that between shadowing and, I mean, you, you don't, you wouldn't see it, a spacer bar. Again, unless it was on like ground floor and you were walking, you know, right by it. And the profiles that you have are pretty basic on the existing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, 
back to this question in a second. So you're you're peeling off all the interior trim, mm -hmm. pulling off the two jams, yes. leaving the exterior trim where it is, Correct. putting the window up against that, then insulating in that cavity, and then putting the interior trim back. Yes. On the interior, all you have to remove are the stops for the old mm -hmm. sash. Mm -hmm. You remove those, and then everything else comes out. And mm -hmm. then you put this window in, and right. then those stops, sometimes yeah, yeah. you trim them down yep. half an inch or something, Got and it. then yep. they go right up against the yep. new, the new yep. jam frame. And there's some foam or something that allows to correct for out of square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Shutters are original. I think, so. <laughs> I think so. I think so. They look original. <laughs> <laughs> Painter, I know, that hates dealing with them. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Any other comments, questions, suggestions? There's a set of criteria that are used to gate, are used for each of the projects, and I'll just read down through them. Number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping not proposed in this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. No change in any of the utilities, lighting, no. okay, not applicable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application is proposed. Raise your hand. And I'll get you to sign this form on the lower left right above my name. Oh, above your name. Yes, yes. right in that little block there. Thank you. All set. And yeah. okay. that'll that'll go back to our office, and Andre will issue you your permit in a, probably a couple of days. Oh, okay. And then I'll wait for that, and then order. I did, didn't want to be presumptuous. <laughs> not, not that, as you can see from one window. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, you. Thank you for maintaining that building so well. Thank it's you very much. Very nice Appreciate place. It. Thanks it's again. An it's an endeavor. <laughs> yes. The next application for 130 Main Street, the Unitarian Church. Yep, and Whoever is involved, come forward and have a seat. And just for the public's knowledge, this isn't actually an application, it's just an informal review of a potential project. Okay. Um, and if, just so you know, that microphone works best if it's pointed exactly at whoever's talking. So we'll put. It's a problem. We'll move this one down a little bit to the catch, but we're gonna make Barbara do all the time. Oh. we don't have any stands in here anymore. No, I'll, 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 I'll be Vanna. Yeah. <laughs> no, put it closer. Chris. You can also put it up on a chair. If yeah. You yeah. Bring, bring a chair up. Over. Give it its own seat. <coughs> yeah. So thanks for uh, meeting with us. Allowing us to jump into your schedule just here. A, a big copy of, we made copies of this for everybody. So um, yeah, so we're we're um, a subcommittee uh, from the Unitarian Church, and I'll introduce myself. I'm Barbara Conry. Chris Hammer. Beth Damon. And uh, um, as Meredith said, we're just looking for some really guidance here. Uh, in terms of a very preliminary review, um, as you probably all know, and we're going to welcome any of your comments or suggestions that you have. Um, as you probably know, our church was built in 1864 and designed by Thomas Silway. 
but there was a 1983 edition put on the back, which you can pretty much see just at most, almost everything beyond the sanctuary um, was part of the edition. Yeah, and um, one of the things we wanted to stress here today too was the, the, the mission of our church because it becomes a big part in terms of what we're trying to do with the building. Um, and our mission states that we welcome all as we build a loving community to nurture each person's spiritual journey, serve, serve human need, and protect the earth, our home. So a big part of what we're proposing has to do with serving human need and, and within the loving community. Um, we're aware, that, of course, that the building is in with, within the design review district and that certain limited criteria are still um, applied by design review, um, although the full zoning is not applied to this building. Um, but having to do with location, size, height, building bulk, yards, courts, setbacks, and the density of the buildings. So just to give you a little background, our, con our congregation has grown and we have already we've grown beyond the existing building and so in 2018 a church task force met with black river design and did some really conceptual conceptual plans for an addition and renovation so that's why you will some sometimes <laughs> see their name on these drawings but these are just concepts really um, one of the primary needs that we have is an expansion of our kitchen um, but the kitchen currently is located in the center of the building. It's really landlocked, and it's about half the size that it needs to be. In the past, we sort of made it work, um, but now we serve community lunch every Monday to 120 people, and it really, really doesn't work any longer. Also, it really needs upgrades in, st in terms of equipment and ventilation, and it's currently a circulation path as well. So that's. It, it's basically on many fronts we needed felt we needed to make changes um, just to, just so yeah. they get oriented sure in the what we have is just the proposed floor plan the current kitchen is in which Oops. of these buildings I think it's in the current kitchen is on floor, the meeting room yes the meeting room the room adjacent to it and the corridor that's up above it yeah okay yeah. so as you see you're right and <coughs> and uh, basically under or above the organ Below the organ. Below the organ. Sorry, yeah. Right. Below the organ. Yeah, because that was sort of the first addition to the building, we believe, was for the organ, and that space below was then taken over as the kitchen. And yep. It has been for um, quite a long time. Um, so we looked at a lot of different concepts to keep the kitchen on the inside of the building, but that would have meant pretty much eliminating the stage, which currently is used by community groups as a performance space. So we felt that that wasn't ultimately the best solution. Um, and uh, so what was proposed kind of later on in the process was this addition to the north. And um, as a, a free, not freestanding, but as a separate uh, construction, as a, an addition to the building, um, we would have a lot more flexibility in terms of size, be able to come out and meet the property setback um, and design it in a way that would really accommodate all of our, our equipment needs as well as health and safety needs. Um, and then potentially adjacent to it on the, in the out exterior would be space for all of the things that we're currently doing in the back of the building in terms of trash and recycling and all of that that currently face onto the river. Um, so the proposal, um, also we felt that the north side of the building is being underutilized. So that at least, you know, if we could take some of that space and make use of it. Um, so as you'll see, if you look at the upper right hand corner of the handout, there's a little um, isometric rendering here. Um, it shows it one story high in order to keep it below this, the uh, sanctuary windows. The windows in the sanctuary are pretty low, the sills are low, um, and so we have a limited amount of vertical height in there. So it does determine that it needs to be a flat roof. Um, we would connect through, as you can see in the lower floor plan, 
um, to the existing vestry through a couple of window openings so there wouldn't be any additional um, openings in the historic building. Um, also, we came to the conclusion that um, the floor level will be about, of the kitchen, will be meet the vestry, which is currently about four feet above um, the grade, at least at the sidewalk um, on Main Street. And um, one of the other things that we've come to, to discover, too, is that due to the need for new equipment and flood proofing, um, that our options for installing windows uh, on the Main Street side and even towards our northern neighbors um, is limited. Uh, one of the concepts, um, is it actually showing there? oh yes, you'll see on this, this larger board that is a little uh, fenced in yard between the addition and Main Street. Um, yeah, yeah, that little dark thing you see there is actually a bench. Um, but the idea was to sort of create a separate space. It may or may not be used to actually provide access to the building, um, but at least it would provide a secure and safe play space for kids out in front. Um, and so that's the basic thing that right now we're looking at, although you'll notice from the plan that there is also a proposed potential uh, addition to the north side of the building, um, to the north side of the addition um, to accommodate some additional space and to uh, handle some circulation issues that we have. Um, so that would sort of, that would be more in keeping with the existing addition. And you can see the hip roof in the back there that indicates that uh, expansion. Because currently the addition does not stick out beyond the building. Um, and then finally, our third point is that our goal in the church with the renovations is to become net zero so that we're producing as much energy as we're using. And a big part of that um, has to do with photovoltaics. And so our plan is to put PV um, on the roof on this south side. Sorry, I don't have a rendering of, yeah. Yeah, of that side. Uh, we've had a proposal from several different contractors already, um, and we feel like we could uh, produce um, well in excess of, of what we actually need. So, but um, at first I would thought that that roof was not visible, but if you are across Main Street, and like in front of Bethany, you can see that roof. But one of the things that we felt was important was to keep the solar um, panels in on the building to actually, first of all, be a guide to sort of be a model for the rest of the city, that we're, we're willing to take the step to become net zero, and we'd like to see that happening throughout the city. So, um, Is okay. Is it a slate roof? No, it's shingle. Yeah, and it's fairly recent. Um, yeah, we've been up replacing it on, on a regular basis. So any thoughts or uh, reactions you have, we certainly welcome. Was there a consideration to gang the kitchen with this new addition? Yes. Um, one of the, if you look at the floor plan that you have on the first floor, there's a room called the fireplace room. Yes right there, which has uh, some historic um, significance to quite a few of the members in the church. It's actually set up much more as a, um, almost like a parlor, like a living space, with, and it has a fireplace that's not currently functioning. And right now we use that as overflow during, or for pe families with children during the um, sermon. Um, so if we were to move the kitchen back, um, it would pretty much obliterate those windows into the fireplace room and also would make access between the kitchen and the vestry where the, the community lunch happens. It would make it difficult. It would, I think, pretty much eliminate the use of that fireplace room. So the window is, there are two windows or one window in the fireplace room? Into the fireplace room. room? Yeah, there are two. There's two. And actually, Look, this down, 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 down the bottom. Below. Yeah. Yes. This one is sort of a modified Palladian with two flanking windows, and this is a round top. 
And uh, we're not actually sure, where, at least I'm not sure, where that Palladian window came, but it might originally have been uh, on the back side of the church, but I can't say for certain. But could it be conceivable that you could build the addition you know, near that window, and it comes to here? Then you'd lose the window. You'd lose one window. Yeah, you'd lose But you one. might gain circulation. <coughs> right. But, so essentially what that would mean is if the kitchen was here, right. that our serving right. would have to take place in right. the fireplace room. Right. Um, it's fairly narrow for that uh, because currently, actually, just to... Here, this is the edge of the stage. Mm -hmm. Currently when we set up for community lunch, we put tables between these two columns and we actually use the stage as sort of a back back bar kind of area. Um, and so just the area for um, serving is pretty large, and then we've got the whole public coming by here. So I'm, I'm not sure that the fireplace room is wide enough. So is the kitchen, or you're not seating people in the kitchen, right? This the kitchen's purely the kitchen. for work. Right, yeah, and it basically we definitely want to have it separated and have separate entrances for uh, food as opposed to dirty dishes. That's one of the issues that we have right now. I think there's some fire code issues too, or mean fire doors. And, and then are you having deliveries through the kitchen or to the kitchen? Currently we have deliveries come in off of School Street and um, I believe the intention is to continue to do that. Apparently we don't other than um, deliveries from the, the food pantry, um, we don't get a lot of large truck delivery. This, you know, we have use of this parking area on Sundays and in the evenings, but it's not normal right away, so we don't, right. they don't really want us to use that. As, uh, yeah, right. So yeah. this wouldn't wouldn't be like a loading dock. <coughs> it's more of a, we need egress there. Yeah, as I remember from being in there that the fireplace room has a lot of interior historic significance uh -huh. with trim details in the yes. fireplace and yeah. the windows. And right. It's right. really a, a very kind of um, warm and welcoming space. That's exactly how I was mm -hmm. thinking of it, warm and yeah. welcoming. Yeah. yeah. So I can see how you want to try to preserve that. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I guess the drawback is, is that you have this bump out right. right below these, you know, these windows that there's some. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It detracts a little bit from that. I see. Yeah. Facade. This feels like weird. And it just seems like the further <coughs> yeah. you kick it back, the, the better off you would be. But I understand regarding the windows. I think one of the issues that we've been dealing with a lot with the current kitchen is that it, it, it functions as a hallway. And so we're, we're trying to yeah. avoid. Which is a no no for sure. It's just, you know, I think a lot of our, I mean, the fireplace room is kind of a hallway too. And so I think to the extent we can really deal with some of these traffic flow issues. I think that's the one thing that we're trying to accomplish with some of these other changes. Because um, it, it, it means that you've got these, it's hard to have meetings when you have, it becomes a walkway for mm -hmm. people. So you're more than doubling the kitchen size from your original. Yes, uh, also to oh. include some storage, food storage, because currently we don't have that. In like our a kitchen. On the basement. Like a walk in cooler? Or? No, we don't have anything that large, just refrigerators. We never hold the food for that long, um, but there are several refrigerators in, in the basement, which we really don't want to continue. So, has Black River masked that shell based on a fit up program with all the equipment? And there is. There are some preliminary designs. Yeah. yeah. And basically what we did was pretty much come out almost as, you know, basically to the setback line, yeah. which is what's represented here. But with, ben, did, you are you just maximizing it, or are you... Oh, sorry. Is, the, is it just maximized as far as what you can do there in that spot, or is it specific to the interior fit-up? It has been uh, specifically designed, but it's not, and it's necessarily in its final design. It was yeah. laid out schematically. Okay. Um, one of the other things, too, that is, you know, I certainly agree with the way this space back here feels, was to try and sort of tie these two together if just with a high fence or something like that. This is the area where I said we could have end up having mechanical equipment. And for sure we'll have trash and recycling and all of those aspects. 
and it's not, I don't believe that it's actually set that right now that this would be the width of the new addition. You know, potentially it could, it could move this way um, more too to bring those two masses together. What about mechanical, uh, um, you know, your vent and your hood and everything that's coming out of this kitchen? How is it, I mean, it's not represented on this rendering Right. as to what that's going to look like. Yeah, we're hoping, um, I, I talked to someone about that and they were saying that they were assuming that it would be a sidewall vent. Um, sidewall out the back? It'd, come out it'd be this great if it could good. come out this side, but functionally yeah. I don't know if it, uh, it might have to come out this side, but uh, it would definitely not come out towards the street. What is, this, what is the space currently used for between the proposed kitchen and It's that grass back. area. Just grass area? Yeah, yeah, and sometimes the kids use it. Um, oh, actually, take it back. Where's the, the labyrinth? Is the labyrinth that? is kind of right here. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a stone labyrinth in the ground. Okay. Is there, are there any exterior doors in this back section, proposed section, either any egress doors? Um, there would be. Yeah, it doesn't exactly show up on this rendering, but if if the stairs was to be back here, it would have to come out towards the river. Mm -hmm. The idea being that you come down ha almost half a flight to uh, reach grade. So that's currently, currently there's a small set of stairs which is really inadequate in here. It's a switchback stair that comes down and then eventually exits out this way. Where does the platform lift go from where to where? Uh, well, it at doesn't least, show on the lower right, level. Right, and it's um, it's the Lula here, and it goes uh, from the the second, the first and second floor plan at least um, to. Um, Oh, I see. I was misreading that. Uh, it may again not not necessarily be in that location. We'd like to be able to use it to take to take to the basement because of the we have you know various things stored down there, just uh, yes uh, decorations and things like that. So it'd really be helpful if it could go to the basement. Um, and also, we're really working with this uh, access uh, issues on this floor because currently. We have about five <coughs> different levels um, in here. Um, so this is being the second floor. As essentially, the floor level of the addition is only 13 inches different than the floor level of the sanctuary. But to get from here to there, um, literally, you have to go down, go up, go up, and go down. So <laughs> it's not very accessible. Um, is there any way to solve some of that with your addition? We do that. That's okay. critical, yes. And, and we haven't quite resolved that. That's why I'm saying that this, these two elements of the stairs in the Lula may not end up in this particular location. Is there a chance to add additional courtyard and possible access between the proposed kitchen and the back addition? And back here? Mm -hmm. um, it's certainly possible. And I'm trying to think functionally if it wouldn't be really helpful. Okay. No, yeah. I was just. Yeah. No, I mean, thanks for bringing that up, Steve. Um, because I'm thinking about people who come in, like when we come in to serve at the community lunch. There's a lot of people coming in. In fact, right through the kitchen right now, um, and and basically what we're doing is putting our things here and then going out to serve. So being able to make sure that we have an access that could go out here uh, to get into the kitchen would also be useful. Is any thought given to possible outside seating there was, seasonally? There was originally in, in this area up up here yeah. um, that, um, in fact, there was thought about trying to put in a, a handicapped ramp that might actually come up and enter into the vestry here. Some problems with that have to do with the fact that there's no airlock entrance then. Um, um, and there, it's, it would be a 48-foot long ramp. Mm -hmm. But creating, especially if we were to, to separate that off with some fencing and things like that, so, um, I think seating area out there would be a big part of it. I think and it would it, be nice to see people sitting out there eating. Yeah, it so would. You know it would, that that right. Event is happening. Sure. Sure. 
this rendering looks like it's proposing some sort of stone and some sort of, st I mean, I don't know if we're to this level of detail, but. Uh, yeah, they were sort totally of. hypothetical. Yeah, that's right. what I figured. Yeah. And <laughs> some of it's blanked out a little bit. I'm not totally clear. It looks like the fodder didn't quite come out. But anyway, there was talk about a pergola out there. So that's I see what that. you're seeing there. But this wall here being the front wall of the kitchen, purposely blank. Yeah. so that it becomes more of a backdrop. And, you know, who knows, maybe it could be plant, have plants. They certainly show a row of plants and trees in front of that wall. I guess one question is, is the notion to try to maintain the same sort of historical character wrapping around this, or is it idea to be a bit of a departure from that? Well, I'm not certain. In terms of the fenestration, the windows, there's not much chance that it's going to be. The, even in the existing vestry, those are very long double hung windows, yeah. which functionally we c couldn't do in here. But right. certainly it would be clabbered with corner boards and, and you know, cornice detail that would not mimic the church, but at least would be consistent, maybe more consistent with the 80, 1983 edition. Hmm. Is there so, space for a narrow landscape? bed along that wall as well? Along this wall towards yes. the north wall? Yes, I would think so. Yeah, okay. I mean, because we've got, uh, still have space here, but we've also got the setback that we can put landscaping in. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, and I think, you know, modifying the, the massing of the proposed addition here could potentially help to connect those elements together a little bit more. How close is the roof to be to the sill? It feels like it's going to have to be really close. Um, I have to say, I didn't take a look at that to see what the floor thickness is. Um, be the ceiling in the existing vestry down below is about 10 feet. So we have, um, and then the ceiling, the sill of the window is about two and a half, would you say? Yeah, yeah above the, the sanctuary floor. So uh, we may have at least some pitch to it. I'd almost, I mean, personally, I would almost prefer to have an interior drain and, and have it be a sort of, uh, if it's going to be flat, to have it be flat, not have it be a very slight slope right. with a shed drainage. I don't <coughs> like that much. <coughs> I feel like it would be nice if this whole thing could get behind this one window. It feels, I mean, sure, we're looking at a very small rendering here. But it Behind feels the first sanctuary window? Yeah. These windows are beautiful. And right. I feel like this is beginning oh, to crowd them crowd them and make them sort of like diminish them a little bit. And yeah. if there was a way to be able to move this this kitchen wall back just enough that it gave that window its full due. Because, right. I mean, this is, you know, I don't, I don't know how much of that I, I see driving down Main Street, but I do feel like it begins to... Diminish this this window if yes. that could just right. push back right. two feet. It looks this like window is clear here. Yeah. Yep. But you're saying if, if, if the massing moved back a little bit. If it, it could. It looks like this wall is almost like a parapet is going above mm -hmm. yes. the wall on the side. Yes, that's what they've shown. One yeah. one interesting treatment might be to bring that down and then do a, a very slight slope around the building to mimic the addition in the back. It doesn't, it wouldn't have to be... Maybe a hip? Oh, a because hip, it's a hip a, in the back. A hip on the kitchen itself. A right. small hip on the kitchen that wraps around that mimics the addition in the back. Even bringing a hip up and then still having a flat, having a flat on the top yes. rather than having such a low slope hip. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be, certainly help to bring those two elements together because um, we could never match the pitch of the existing room. No, no, but just a small hip on the one-story mm -hmm. addition might blend it in. And it, yeah, it might help to potentially inform the roof form of the addition as well. Yeah, I don't know as if you can pull that off personally. I, I think the flat with an interior slope. Mm -hmm. Pardon? 
think the flat is the better way to go because uh -huh. it separates itself out from the original and from the addition. Yeah. And I think that if you go with the hip, it's going to look truncated. And it I will. Don't, I don't think it, it will. It will only come up a, a few feet. Yeah, I don't think it will work, personally. Um, I, again, I think to Ben's point, pushing it further back is definitely a win. Um, so getting this wall back just yeah, past I mean, that well, second. Well, as far as it could go. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the issues, these are existing windows, and we're thinking of just opening those up and turning them into doors. So if we move this wall over, we, we kind of we lose that mm. flow through. You've got to punch in either have either just one a, entrance or Either got to create another, another hole in the wall there, or um, I think the idea of, you know, I think we just want to have a little more circulation in and out of the kitchen. So is the kitchen, is there a serving area? Would actually be outside in the vestry. It's outside, so. But we need to have one door that's dedicated to moving food through it, and one door that's dedicated to moving soil dishes through. That's what we were told. Um, yeah, and unfortunately, I mean, this this uh, Palladian window here uh, really creates um, uh, a stop for us. Otherwise, you know, if if that wasn't there, if it was relocated or something, we'd have much more flexibility in terms of pushing the mass back. What is what is this little corner partition here? Is that a closet in the fireplace room? It's, it's actually bathroom. it's actually a bathroom. It's oh, a toilet okay. room. Yeah, it's about the size of a closet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's not necessarily a critical element um, to everything. So if we, you know had to break through that, I'm thinking it's possible we could do that. Is this center portion here, is that just a solid wall or is there pass through there? No, it's a solid wall right now. Although I keep hearing from everyone that the best design of kitchens is has a lift door. To it, but the proposal to keep more of the, uh, I think, historic feeling was to have the two doors and still have serving tables out in the vestry. It's kind of what we've gotten used to doing. Go up into the chair. <coughs> the pass through can be pretty useful as far as setting things out exactly. and bringing things yeah, back right. in right. without having to necessarily go through the door and yeah. set it down. You can set it there and then somebody inside can Right. I move think, it. you know, and I think that that discussion needs to happen more because... It seems to work pretty well in the back of the Episcopal Church. Uh-huh. Yeah, because without there. that, we really need, like we have over here, we need sort of a staging area. Um, and once we start pushing out into the vestry, we're really cutting into our seating area. And today it was pretty full in there for lunch. So if the if office meeting, Lula and all that circulation, if the office meet, meeting went somewhere else, and the circulation went somewhere else. Could you put kitchen there, or is it too far away? I looked at that. I was really tempted, but it is a very long way. So essentially what would have to happen is that we'd have to use the fireplace room for serving, um, or currently, or walk through it, which is currently what we do now. We walk through um, the room that's listed as lobby, um, down on the south side, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, with uh, from the kitchen, we walk through the lobby to get um, access to the vestry. And in what they end up doing is putting the dirty dish service um, in the in the lobby, which is actually currently a classroom, but. Uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's, it's a lot of movement. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, you can, you can understand why this is so important. Yeah. <laughs> Anything you can do to minimize distance moved is definitely an asset. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know what you 
guys think, but I think we could certainly take a look at, again at doing the service window mm -hmm. in there to minimize. Um, we have a lot of people using this kitchen that have a lot of opinions about <laughs> yes. how it should be laid out. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. Sure you have some design <laughs> process. About 250 opinions. Yeah. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think on all the plans we got from Black River, this is a blank space. Yeah. But there actually has been quite a lot of thought given over to what are we going to put in there? You know, I think to really figure out your major input are we, should are we come making from, the, from the cooks. <laughs> right. Yes, that's right. And well, they the have people to, that do the community lunches, they're the ones they, that have some ideas about they how things certainly change. certainly know what should happen, yeah. And one thing that should happen is ventilation and cooling. In there. <laughs> yes. um, I mean, I don't know what. I don't know. Liz, were you involved in any of the renovations to the building back in the ni in 1983? No, I wasn't. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I don't know when that Palladian window went in. Yeah. But it certainly seems to have a <coughs> life of its own. Right. I don't recall. I did a study of the building when you did the um, when you looked at all the stencils and so on. Oh, okay. That was back probably in the 90s, maybe yeah, or I think late 90s. Late 90s, yeah. yeah. Do you have any photos of what the fireplace room looks like no, or sorry. exterior photos of that area? No. Um, I don't think so. I'm sorry. Um, we could definitely send those to you to look at. Well, don't, don't worry. It'll, it'll all come back. Yes. Yeah. And then and you guys can do another informal review when you're further along. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this you is make some other very decisions. preliminary designs. And yeah. It's based on, you know, Black River's reading of a year's worth of research <laughs> with congregation members, but um, it's by I, no means fine. I think for me, again, pushing it as far back as possible is, is key. I think it's a shame that it's so tight to the bottom of the windows, mm -hmm. uh, but if it has to be there, then I think flat roof is the way to go. I think um, separating it out through a different material is probably a good way to go. Really making it um, not part of it, not trying to blend it is right. probably a better right. way to go. Yeah. But it would be ideal to push that further back. And I know you like the fireplace from windows. But maybe they can come up with a creative way to keep the windows and still have it located. Maybe that becomes a circulation area that is still open to a corridor or whatever, so you're not getting natural light, but maybe you're getting, you're still getting light coming through. Just a note to everybody about the, what is currently the open space between the kitchen and the <coughs> Riverside addition. For site plan purposes, it, we might want to try and keep some of that because right now where all the garbage and everything is, is behind the building but still completely viewable from the river and being able to hide that and mechanicals and stuff in that alcove is a good thing if at all possible, even if there's a fence there to buffer it from the neighbors. But for site plan purposes, I think we'd rather it there and for floodplain purposes, we'd rather it there than right adjacent to the so river. it's not there now. It's no. not, no, there's no. not, it's Every, just green space this, there now. This, this thing is, this is where we have all our trash receptacles and it's, it's very narrow. There. It's very narrow back there. Yeah, right yeah. the river. Um, yeah, yeah th that's a good point, Meredith. Yes. Yeah. I feel like the space could be made in sort of a little more, a little more continuity mm -hmm. if this concept of this pergola also passed, you know, at the same yes. elevation, yeah. passed through mm -hmm. to those same buildings that then allowed, that was, you could still have the trash and recycling so. and still keep the light, but at least these kind of lines and it just right, would doesn't, bring that, doesn't that feel like weird dead space. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, so that those are tied together all the way across. Yeah, at the same elevation. Um, if we were to try and I'm actually not sure if that's, but if we were to try and push this back, um, yeah, it would really 
require a relocation of that palladium window and I think even you know we could still keep the fireplace room with its ambiance that's there but relocating that window I'm not sure exactly how that would work. Mm -hmm. Can maybe the window stay and you put some really nice like daylight on the other side that's just shining through the window? Yeah. Except that the they were talking about not having any windows in the kitchen because of ventilation and other issues and so that, being yeah, able to have room for all the equipment in the kitchen. So you're saying if you push the kitchen back here but there was still some sort of I'm just talking. Yeah, no, but actually. Like you leave yeah. the window there and then sure put, put a, a window well, a light well yeah. behind it. Mm. Just put some LEDs yeah. that have nat you know, natural, natural light effect. 2700 I mean, K. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. That yeah. window has a curtain on it. I mean, a, a gauzy curtain all the time. So, um, yeah, that's a, definitely a consideration we hadn't thought about. Um, make it seem like it's outside. Make it yeah. seem that way. Yeah. But if you, have, if you have circulation through here, then conceivably and it's a one-story space right so you could have skylights through here if you're having circulation come through yeah it's just what are you looking at when you're looking out through here if we move the kitchen down is that is well it'd be it, the kitchen would be on the other side it would just be purely for circulation oh we hadn't oh i hadn't even considered that uh-huh so you're thinking of hallway of yep. some kind mm. back yeah. there. And then you can throw in skylights and light up the... Yeah, and we could use that as an element that takes this mass and separates it from the existing building. By so probably narrows your kitchen a bit because they don't have a whole lot more room to make that kitchen stick wide, out further right. because of the setbacks. Well, right. it widens out toward, right, right, because because this, right. Right, 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 right. Right, right. Right, so I as we... You. Yeah, so if we were able to do that... That would give us a lot more flexibility. Yeah. Um, functionally, I think we'd have to talk to the kitchen people about how that might work. Yeah. But it might provide them with um, with more flexibility in terms of where these openings happen. And then pulling. So then you're saying pull this back behind this line. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that you're kind of behind this yes. window. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think these windows, don't they line up with the windows they upstairs? Do. Yeah, right, yeah. right. So so that's why this doorway is actually shown in an existing window, um, which is below this one. But they're saying pulling it back beyond mm -hmm. this one. That certainly would um, um, de-emphasize the massing towards Main Street. Okay, great. Is Black River still helping you with this? Um, not right now. Um, we're trying to, uh, we're at the construction process subcommittee, so we're trying to take the, the plans and um, just massage them in a way that we think is going to work a little bit more efficiently. But they, the intention is that they would produce uh, um, at least pre presentation drawings for us. Yeah. Well, what do you think? You could take the, those, all of those ideas. Yeah, no, I think those back. are some good, some yeah, good thoughts about. Yeah, some good comments. Yeah. Um, what's your feeling about this wall here being blank or better blank than having some small punched windows in it? The one towards Main Street. I'm with Seth that I really like the departure from. The rest from the rest, yeah, okay. And whether that is windows or even whether it is a, a stone facade or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I could see it being, being blank. Green wall. Yeah. Green wall. <laughs> yeah. I just thought of that the other night. It was yeah. It yeah. Was, except winter time is tough. Um, with with landscaping wall. proposed in front of it, if you you know if the plants get up to a certain right. height, there's going to be very little of it exposed. Exposed. Anyway. That's right. That's right. So in some ways, it's we could get the plants closer to it as a shield. And it also depends on how successful that pergola can be in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. without the pergola, it really is a problem. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's really nice as an exterior seating space. and space, yeah. space for just people to be around the church. I think that's nice. And potentially the public to be at access to it as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next. Yeah.
Good luck Thank with you. your continuing <laughs> you. involvement of your plan. Thanks so much. For the best option. Yeah. <laughs> so called, but yeah. It's, uh, uh, so um, I don't know if you want to just mark these plans as, as draft or preliminary uh, or something. Yes. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's on the it's on the it's on the um, agenda and it's everything. Just, is. I don't know if there's a date on these. Oh, all right. Yes, 10-16. So yeah. Just to note that uh, those are very preliminary. Yeah. <coughs> thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, thank, thank you. you for coming. Has everybody had a chance to look at the minutes from June the 3rd and July the 8th? So, just to Three. note that the June 3rd minutes have been looked at previously, but I was asked to go back and confirm that the 101 Northfield Street um, conditions of re review were correct. So, I also pulled and included in your packet the actual recommendation form. What's in here is exactly what's stated in the recommendation form that was signed off on. Okay. So. So Liz, Ben, and myself were the three here for the meeting. Do you have any questions, suggestions, changes that you see? I feel like I'm the one that brought that up. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is what it is. It yeah. is what it is. It's, I mean, I know that there was discussion in the actual yeah. discussion that, that might have been phrased a little differently. Yeah. So what ended up on the recommendation form is what I ended up reflecting in the minutes. Yep. Then okay. Sounds great. If it sounds good, do I hear a motion <laughs> to approve? So moved. Second. All in favor of the June 3rd minutes, raise your hand. They are approved. Thank you. And how about July the 8th? Actually, we need Eric here to approve yep. that, so we'll have to table it anyway. The word in uh, on this side is the walls, compact, and back, and all the water. Wait, wait, wait. Huh. Let's see. 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 Missed that in proofing. I'll look back at that and figure out what was actually discussed there. Waterproof with sand. I like it. <laughs> How do you waterproof compact? I yeah I. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that one got missed. I, I don't know. I'll fix that. Fix and return. Thank you. Thank you. Table until next time. Mm -hmm. Until Aaron comes back. Anything else anybody has? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned.